Kaya Rotterdam. Heading north along Kaya Governor Door, Nicholas de Brat. You will likely miss its sharp hairpin turn entrance near the Black Durgeon Inn as you fight the potholes left by a road in disrepair. Time to turn around. Kaya Rotterdam is a quiet street of old homes along the sea. It is largely inhabited by long-term Bonaire residents and access to the reef is restricted. Many of the people in these homes no longer dive. There are no dive moorings or easy access to this area south of the Black Jurgen, so divers simply drive on by. Kaya Rotterdam follows a reef system that extends from the Black Durgeon and the Small Wall dive site to the Dive Friends Hamlet Oasis entrance point for the dive site cliff. South of Jens Reef we find the new boatyard that has been built to address Bonaire's expanding population and then the Kuroil Terminal and the web desalination facility. Here we also see the desalination plant intake pipes and the large curved containment boom. The island wants to expand the area at Webb and Coroil to make it a container port. Some say this reef is beaten and dead and not worth saving. We will let you decide. Jen's Reef, also called Freedom's Reward, is just a short swim north of the intake pipes for the desalination plant where this Coroil ship is currently moored. 46 meters beneath that ship is a shipwreck which, like this reef, has been forgotten. This is Rich. I'm at the uh, Cliff Dive Site entrance uh, at Hamlet Oasis, and um, this is really the only entrance uh, directly into this forgotten reef. Uh, and what I want to draw your attention to is uh, the booms that we talked about in the video, uh, and that uh, that tanker that sits there. Right below that, actually a little bit to the south of that, uh, is the inlet to the uh, to the water plant. Uh, and below that is the wreck. Now, a lot of times people will come here and they'll see the ship moored there, or they'll see the boom in the entrance to the water salination plant, and they'll think, well, I'm not going to go dive over there. And they head south and towards the cliff dive site like most people do. Not us, we're explorers. We're gonna head north when other people head south. We wanna find out what's down there. Let's go diving. This is the story of two divers who left the corporate world and moved to Bonaire to live a diver's life by the sea. Many only dream about this life. Our hope is to inspire you through our experiences and stories so that you can live the dream too. This is A Diver's Life. The water and sky, reflection in my eye, and it's true, so true. We begin our adventure late morning at Jen's Reef. A rainbow parrotfish bashfully shows us its tail as it leaves us behind. Not to worry, we know where you live. We will film you again. 
The water temperature has been 26 Celsius for months, eliminating the bleaching and leaving a reef of vibrant colors in its wake. Swarms of brown chromis dance before your dive mask. This reef seldom sees people. To get here, ask your dive boat to take you to Smallwall and swim south. Going deeper, and you are greeted by hundreds of yellowtail snapper. They might even let you join their school. Heading back up the wall, the coral becomes more dense. Reaching the top of the reef, the life erupts in the sunlight. You feel like you've been transported to a marine metropolis. Time to don our tech gear and enter the southern end of this forgotten reef. Let's find that wreck. We descend along the pipe that marks the border between the Hamlet Oasis entrance and the Webb Desalination Facility and the Corroyal Terminal. In 1955, the Overseas Gas and Electricity Company started its activities in Bonaire. In 1963, the Water Distribution Service was founded. The two companies merged in 1978 to form the water and energy company Bonaire, we know as Webb. The wreck, called Cooper's Barge, lies in front of the Webb Water Factory. It is actually called Water Barge No. 101. It sank somewhere from 1972 to 1974. Cooper's Barge is named after a recognized underwater photographer. The story goes that when the water distribution company's weir system failed and Bonaire was forced to buy its water from Curaçao, the water barge was used to haul fresh water from Curaçao. These enormous chains lead down to a mooring block over 40 meters down, which is part of a large marine diesel engine. A similar set of chains reside on the north side of the facility. Naturally, we have to go see it. Getting back to our barge story, in the words of Captain Don Stewart, the founder of Bonaire Scuba Diving, it was nothing but a floating steel tank with a bow and stern that were flotation sections of the barge. As Captain Don recounts in his book Reef Windows, Bruce Bowker and other Bonaire diving legend and other instructors were poring over dive schedules when they looked out the north window of Stewart's Aquaventure Dive Shop and exclaimed, The barge is sinking! Captain Don believed the stern section to be sunk as 90% was underwater with only the bow flotation section keeping the rest above the water. It stayed that way for days. On the third day, someone called Stewart saying that they saw Addy climbing up on the barge. Addy Everts was Bonaire's only Antillian dive instructor and well known for some pretty harrowing feats. Through his binoculars, Stewart could see Addy fully geared up and struggling to get to the hatch on the foredeck. He watched Addy knocking at the hatch lever to get it open. 
Captain Down yelled, Addy, leave it! That is a door to the last air in the barge. The air was under incredible pressure, keeping the tons of steel afloat. Suddenly, the hatch flung open with a force that could have catapulted boulders, and Addy was flung like a stone into the sea, his dive gear flying. The barge sank in seconds. Amazingly, he was uninjured. The next afternoon, Bruce Bowker took some tourists and instructors to the water plant. The wreck laid flat on the bottom on a 60-degree angle with its stern sunk deep in the sand. You know the story. Let's see her for ourselves. We pass the water intake tube. There she is. Water Barge 101. Three large lionfish, one huge, dash under the wreck. And the top of the bow is at about 38 meters or 125 feet. The stern rests at 45.2 meters or 149 feet. My teammate Bob Burks takes a look down the water tank cover. Time to head down and see those lionfish. The big fatty got under the wreck. I guess that's why he's big. The stern is curved, unlike the bow. Time to head for our deco stop. We head up toward the water intake tube. Bob hangs on his deco stop. Given the close vicinity of Jen's Reef, the resorts, and what you see here, should Benair put a container port here? Humans tend to lose things like tires, fuel, and even water barges. We look forward to your comments. One thing we do know for sure is that wreck will look even better at night with our new lights. Let's go see. This is one of the most beautiful dives Bob and I have ever been on. Those dark patches are where Sergeant Majors laid their eggs. The entrance to the water tank.
the stern in full color. Nature is its own Picasso. A large rainbow parrotfish sleeps under the wreck. What is that under the bow? A much larger rainbow parrotfish. Those colors are amazing. The full story of the sinking can be found in Captain Don Stewart's book, Reef Windows. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit the subscribe button and the bell. It goes a long way to supporting this channel and helps you to know when new content is released. Thank you for watching.